just briefly touched in previous session that what is a sentence sentence is a group of words that makes sense so sentences we use different types of sentences to communicate in our daily life there are certain situations where we just make some statements we use different sentences you know in different situations like Muhammad jumped over the fence we just making a statement so you understand sometimes we make exclamatory sentences like oh I'm so excited to watch this video and we make command somebody say give me the book and we can ask questions like did you finish your homework did you do your homework so if you see each sentence conveys a different message there's a different tone and different attitude so it's very important to understand when we are reading Quran what is the tone of the sentence what is the message of the sentence what is Allah is trying to give us some message or is he commanding us is he asking question that's what is very important to identify what is the type of a sentence we are reading so when you're reading Arabic so as I said Arabic is a simple language to so try to simplify as much as possible so in terms of types of sentences in Arabic we have two types of sentences we know we have learned three types of words ism, fa'al, harf if you look into minute detail there are three types of sentences but on a broad classification we'll say there are two types of sentences what are those sentence is called jumla in arabi jumlatun but we will pronounce it jumla so last letter is not pronounced so first jumla we'll try and use as much as of arabic words as possible so that we get used to those words so first jumla which is a jumla which begins with the ism and what is an ism ism is a noun so it is called al jumlatun ismiyatu and the second sentence is called a jumla which begins with the fa'al so what is fa'al fa'al means verb so this jumla is called as al jumlatul fa'aliyatu so there are two types of sentences one is jumlatul ismiya another one is jumlatul fa'aliya so inshallah today we'll be learning about jumlatul ismiya so what is jumlatul ismiya it is a sentence of a noun which means there's a sentence begins with an ism or the main subject of the sentence is an ism so in English we call it as a nominal sentence so this jumla the sentence the jumla al ismiya it has got two parts to it so when we read the sentence we have to see look for, for these two parts what are those two parts the first part is we need to look for the subject or the title of the sentence what is being talked about what is the main person or a thing or an object or an idea so what is the main title of the subject and what is that being is talked about and that's called a news news about the subject so we got two parts we got subject and what we call this subject or title in Arabic it's called as Mubutada and the news about the subject is called Khabar Mubtada means the beginning actually it's like in Urdu it starts from like Ibtada so it's Mubtada that main subject or the title and we got Khabar which is news so Mubtada and Khabar so if you look at these sentences we can identify if I say Muhammad is intelligent so you know Muhammad is the subject of the sentence and we're giving some news about him it's called is intelligent let's see how do you write in Arabic you write Muhammadun Zakiyun Muhammad is intelligent if I say you are a student 
what do we write the u is a subject and we're giving news that he is you are student anta talibun say i am a teacher say ana mudarrisun so how do we identify in a sentence what is mubtada and what is khabar so those who are not familiar with arabic when you are reading so how do we identify when we translate to understand what is mubtada and what is khabar if we look at these sentences when we read in english we read it as muhammad is intelligent you are a student i am a teacher but when you write it in arabic we just write muhammadun zakiyun which literally means muhammad intelligent there is no is anta talibun you a student ana mudarrisun i a teacher so there are words which are missing which is called a coupling words which joins what is called connectors is is or and am am are not there in arabic so when we are translating if we can fit the is if we can fit the r if we can fit the am then we know that the part before it becomes the mubtada and the part after it becomes a khabar if we translate here if we say muhammad zakiyun but you have to translate it as muhammad is zakiyun so muhammad becomes a mubtada and zakiyun becomes khabar so if we identify it's like you are a student if say anta talibun ana mudarrisun i am a teacher so if we find in a sentence that missing is then we know that the part before it becomes mubtada and the part after it becomes a khabar inshallah we will be practicing more I'll be sending some verses of the Quran so we can identify what is mubtada and what is khabar. So the part before is becomes mubtada and the part after is in a sentence becomes the khabar.